Hi, good afternoon everybody. Um, this is another video we've made today in response to another question we've had from a parent. Um, the question we received from the parent was asking about uh, token economies and token boards. And uh, the parent asked us how to use them properly because it seemed like her child didn't really understand uh, what they were all about and what to do. So I thought I'd give you a very detailed uh, breakdown of how we teach children about token economies, how they can be used, and uh, how we can help the children to learn you know, what to do and how to understand them. We'll probably break this into a few videos. Um, so today we're going to start with thinking about uh, when you begin, what kind of token board you use. And there's a few different varieties of token economies that we might want to use with children. And they have varying aspects of difficulty. So this is my favorite, just putting bricks in a bucket. This one's probably the easiest to teach, and I'm going to show you how we use this one in just a minute. Um, this one is uh, also quite an easy one to use um, because you can see very clearly when we take the tokens off when they're not there. The child finds it very easy to see, oh, when it goes on, I just need to cover up all the blue. So it's much easier. This one's a bit more difficult um, because when you take the token off, the only way the child knows how many to do is by the Velcro piece. So it's a little bit more challenging to know. But many kids can learn how to do this. And this certainly kind of looks more fun. We like to tailor the tokens to the child's preferences. So this is a child who might like cars, transportation, uh, penguins or lions, sunshine. So we can make tokens out of pretty much anything. There are some more advanced token economies too for groups and other things and we're going to deal with that in another video. Um, so let's start with this one. That's the easiest. Okay, it's easiest because these are very easy children can manipulate. The tokens can be a bit fiddly. Some children like the Velcro, but they tend to be a bit more fiddly. These much, much more easy, right? Just a brick, you just put it in. Um, so I know many of you might think, oh, well, how many tokens do you start with? You know, how do I begin? Well, you start with one, okay? When you're starting out, because the child has to learn a few things. And what we're trying to help the child to understand is that um, this brick is going to lead them to the reinforcement. Now, let, let me find a reinforcer. I think I have my phone here somewhere earlier. Okay, we can use this. Every child's favorite toy, the iPad. So she loves this iPad, okay? And this is very motivating for her. So what I want to teach her is that she needs to do something first in order to earn it, okay? And it's very simple. All she needs to do is to put this brick in the bucket and give me the bucket. When she does that, she can have the iPad, okay? Now, in the beginning, what often is going to happen is when you put the reinforcement here or you withhold the reinforcement, the child doesn't understand they need to do this task. So they might be grabbing for the reinforcement, they might start to get upset, they may start to cry because you're not letting them have what they want. So you need to be quite quick in this process. So usually what would happen is, Christy, you come over here, is that I would help facilitate this process to happen very, very quickly when I bring the child to the chair, okay? So I've got my token here, and I'd be like, hey, Christy, let's go sit down and do some things. Great, okay, put this in. Very nice, here. Yeah. Okay, it's really quick. There's not a lot of time in that process for her to become upset and start grabbing, okay? I had to assist a lot of it. So the next time I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna see if I can provide a little bit less help, a little bit less prompt. So again, I'm gonna take away the toy and then very quickly provide her the token, right? She doesn't need to do anything apart from put it in the basket. All right, my turn. Okay, let's put that in here. Good. 
Very nice. There you go. Okay, that was good. She did a little bit more of it that time, okay, uh, which was good. I'm going to do it one more time to see if I can get it a bit more smooth so I'm not having to provide any kind of prompts. The other thing I want to see is that when she gives me the bucket, does she automatically go to get the reinforcement? Because that would show that she understands that this is <clears throat> the reason why she can earn that reinforcement. Okay, my turn. Let's put that here. Hang on, wait. Okay, let's put that in. Very good. Oh, wow, so that was good. Now, it wasn't good she grabbed the pot, because that would mean that maybe she doesn't understand she's got to put that in. But she did a good job of getting the brick, putting it independently, giving me the basket. And she also independently went to the toy without me having to prompt her or indicate to her. I'm going to do it one more time just to make sure she understands. All right, my turn. Let's put that here. Okay, good. Let's put that in. Very nice. Wow. Okay, you understand all of that. That's great. So she's very independent now. That's very good. So she's now putting one in. So now would be the time to increase to see if she can understand that there's a few things that she might uh, be able to put in here. Okay? This will make the amount of work she needs to do a little bit longer. So again, I'm going to start with two bricks. Okay? Now, what's maybe going to happen is that she's used to, at this point, just putting one in. So she may not understand that you've got to put all of them in in order to get the reinforcement. So she may grab uh, for the bucket to give it to me after the first one. So let's see what happens. All right, my turn. Let's put that here. Okay, now listen. We've got two to put in here now, okay? We've got two. Let's put this one in. Oh, hold on. Wait, wait, wait. Look, one more. Okay, we got one more. Wait. Okay, let's put this one. Wow, finished. Great. Okay, good. So you could see she wasn't really sure about that process. So I tried to point it out, indicate, make it clear, visually point out what's going on. Okay? So we're going to try that one more time. Okay, my turn. Now, look, Christy, we've got two to do again. Okay? Got two. Let's put both these in. All right, let's put this one. Good. And this one. Wow, very good. She's a fast learner. Okay, that was nice. That was very independent. I didn't need to provide any prompts, okay? So now I could probably increase. And maybe I'll go to maybe four, four items, okay? All right, my turn. Wow, look, we got more. Hang on, wait. We got more to do now, right? Okay, let's put all these in the basket. Let's do this one. Good. And this one. Good. This one. Very nice. And this one. Wow, that's really good. Yeah. Okay. So you could increase the number of those if you wanted to. Okay. So that's the second stage. She's now understanding that these are going in the bucket and she's only the reinforcement. That would be the same as if we were doing the token board. All right. The same process would occur in the sense I'd start with one, I give her the token, she's going to put it on, she's going to give me the token board. That means that she understands she's finished, okay? Just like she would give the bucket. And we would then increase back from, you know, one to three, okay? So at this point in time, she demonstrates, she understands that she needs to get these bricks to get that reinforcement, right? That's great. And she's very motivated to get these bricks. So these have also come, become kind of reinforcing. The next thing we would do is we may start to target some uh, behaviors. So in the next video, I'm going to show you how we're going to work on increasing some good things we want to see with the students uh, by using the token economy.